Welcome back everybody to Gemology for Schmucks. My name is Peter Nelson and today we're going to be talking about specific gravity. I know it sounds really boring and lame, but I promise you this is something that's been used in one way, shape, or form since the beginning of time. Even back in antiquity, when people were starting to find these beautiful stones, they learned to distinguish them using some of their features. They can recognize some of the natural qualities of the stone, and that is what helped them to understand what was valuable and what was common. So every mineral has its own properties. Sometimes that's connected to color, sometimes that's connected to things like pleochroism that we talked about in this video over here. Sometimes it's the doubling that you can see with your eyes. And sometimes it's even a perceived weight. Think about if you go to the grocery store and you want to get an orange. In order to get the most delicious orange, what you do is you pick up an orange and you heft it. So you put it in your hand and you kind of do this and you get a feeling of how heavy is it for its size. With stones, you do the exact same thing. With fruit, the heavier it is, typically the more ripe it is. And once again, that's for a particular size. So if the fruit feels heavier than some of these others that are about the same size, then it's more likely to be ripe. And that particularly works with citrus fruits and also pomegranates. With gemstones, however, if you've got orange stones in your hand, for example, and you're trying to decide what kind of orange stone is it, one thing that many people will do to get a better idea of what is this stone is they'll put it in their hand and they'll kind of do this. And you'll see them look off into space. Because what they're doing is they're trying to get an idea of, okay, this stone is about this big, but how does it feel in my hand? Does it feel heavier than I expect it to be or lighter than I expect it to be? And that's all connected to something called specific gravity. Specific gravity is basically density. Some stones have a very high specific gravity. Some of them have a lower specific gravity. Something like opal, for example, is very light. So when you heft opal, if it's that fire opal that can be transparent with no play of color, that's gonna be very different from something like, for example, garnet that can also be orange. They have quite different specific gravities. The other way, which is much more scientific, is to use a specific gravity test kit like this one right here. This comes with a few main components. This plastic stand goes over the actual weighing pressure plate. Then we have the stand that sits on the pressure plate. And then we have the basket which sits on top of this stand. Don't forget the beaker and make sure that it's got water in it. So in order to use the specific gravity testing kit, what we're gonna do is first take a stone and we're gonna put it in this top basket right here. And then we're gonna record the weight. Now this is what we call the weight in air. Specific gravity, the formula, is the weight of air divided by the loss of weight in water. So what we do is we take that weight in air and subtract out the weight in water. And we're gonna get that by taking the stone and putting it in this bottom basket down here. And then we can do our calculation. Now there's a couple of caveats that we need to keep in mind. The water that we put in this beaker needs to be distilled water. If it has any extra minerals or if it has extra gas in it, that can throw off the reading. This is a quite sensitive reading, so you wanna make sure that you eliminate as many variables as possible. The other thing is if you're trying to get the specific gravity of a stone that has, for example, a bead drill hole through it, that can trap air and also throw off the reading. Likewise, if it's got any cracks or something, maybe you're weighing a piece of rough, if those cracks trap any kind of gas or any kind of air, that will throw off the reading. Some people will use a little paintbrush to remove bubbles from the surface of the stone. So the formula, once again, is the weight in air, which is the measurement we get from this top basket. And then we take that over the loss of weight in water. So that's the weight in air minus the weight in water. And then we divide these two values. The specific gravity of different types of minerals or a range of specific gravities is available online and lots of charts and books, so it's very easy information to find. So this piece of information can help you distinguish between two different stones, but sometimes two minerals have a very similar specific gravity range. Specific gravity is not something you can rely on all of the time. Early gemology students love to get specific gravity because it's the easiest and most definite thing to find, assuming you actually measured it correctly. But oftentimes there's an entire range of minerals that fit inside of that specific gravity. So it's important to do other types of tests. Other tests such as the refractive index, whether or not the gemstone actually splits light, these sorts of things. All right, that's all we've got for today's episode of Gemology for Schmucks. I hope that this helped you. We've been talking about specific gravity, which you can find either by hefting the stone and feeling whether or not it seems heavier than you expect it to be for its size, or you can use a specific gravity test kit if you have one of these kits and a very sensitive scale. I hope that this helps you in your pursuit of finding truth in gemstones. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and tell all your friends. If you've got any comments, if you'd like to know more about how specific gravity works, then please leave me a message down below, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.